Hey, Wayne, you also have a new employee today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My man, Marquis. Marquis. came in through. First day? First day, yeah. So we're going through training right now, actually. Yeah. Yes, hey, sir. you've been training a lot of new people. Yeah. How do you think your process has evolved or is it still the same? Nah, it's growing. Yeah. Each time somebody else comes in, we got a new thing that we're implementing. We got uh, more of the checklist going on. Um, we, we're just getting more organized to make it more simple. Yeah. So let's hope nobody else leaves. But when every time somebody leaves, I'm like, man, I should have implemented that. And then I put that into play. So each time we're just growing and leveling up. Cause you, uh, last week or so, you actually lost somebody already. Yeah, people come and go. Yeah, Yeah, yeah we lost a guy. It, it, uh, just barely trained them, invested a lot of time into them, and yeah. they gone. All right, you guys, in this video, we're going to focus on the whole training process, so you guys follow along with me. All right, so the first checklist is the chemical checklist. So we were having a lot of problems out in the field, just freestyling chemicals, and then we were like, oh, we forgot the interior cleaner. Oh, we forgot this. So I was like, we need a checklist. So we got that one. This next one is the van checklist for all the accessories, all the tools we need to get the job done. Um, as you can see, air compressor, vacuum attachment, gas cans, and the same thing, we were forgetting stuff. You get out there on a job, you need to do a shampoo, and you don't have the extractor hose, can't get the job done. So we were running back and forth, 30, 40 minutes away. That's a problem. And then next up, we got the chemical fill up. We haven't really implemented this yet, but this is the next thing we need to implement. So this is what the guys, we'll put the guys' names right here. Monday is our best. Tuesday is Javari, and they need to go in the corner and start filling up chemicals. And the chemicals are, are labeled which ones they need to fill up. So that way we can keep consistency on the bottles being filled. So that's what we have so far. If you guys have any ideas on another checklist we need to do, um, comment it down below. Hey Wayne, is this a regular morning routine? You and the team get over here, do the checklist, and then on your way? Or how do you balance it? What I want to implement is having this already done. Mm. Like, um, we, we be slacking sometimes to where we just come and drop the van off. So we shouldn't even have to do that. We should just have everything ready and then check it off real quick and be done in 10 minutes, you know? So, but this is our normal routine that we come and do. Cause uh, I'm looking at it, man, from an outside perspective. Yeah. It is taking a cool minute. It does We've take We've been here time. 15, 20 minutes. Right. When you could already been heading out. Exactly. But. Or a meeting, you mm. know, we could be talking about what we could do better and exactly. stuff like that, you know? But so, would you do that the day before in the afternoon? And who would you want to do that? Well, I would want everybody to take care of their own van. Mm -hmm. So when we get back, we should be getting the van ready. Like right now, we're filling up water. We're putting the equipment back in the van. Right, right. Filling up chemicals if needed. Yes, sir. Killing daylight. Morning time. Exactly. Let me check the time right now. Make sure we're good. So right now, we are 30 minutes away. We're supposed to be at the customer at nine o'clock. It's eight seventeen, eight eighteen. So we could actually get ready to start leaving right now, Rez. So we can get there actually ahead of time. All right. So here's another checklist I made: vehicle complete checklist. So this is something we're supposed to implement after finishing the customer's vehicle. So I'll say to Marquise, like, "Hey, uh, how are the windows? Are they looking streak free? Um, is the exterior streak free?" The rims, tires, and fender wells, is those all clean? The air vents, how do those look? So we're actually checking them out and checking it off, um, just so we don't miss anything. So this is another checklist. Hey, you're making a lot of progress, Wayne. Yeah. We hey. just gotta implement this stuff, man. Your new employee, how you find them? Um, it's actually my wife's best friend. They were friends since high school. And um, we placed a vending machine in her location when I did vending, and I met uh, Marquise um, because him and his uh, wife work together. So I met him and I got to see his work ethic. You was working there for how long, bro? 13 years. 13 years. So you get anybody <laughs> that worked at a place that long. All you wanted was weekends off, but a regular job said no. Yeah. And then you just decided, I'm gonna do something else? Pretty much. And yeah. then you reached out to Wayne or did he reach out to you? Uh, I kept in touch with Wayne. You know, mm -hmm. I did a few other uh, jobs, but and now is the time I was like, hey, Wayne, I'm ready to come aboard. So now I'm here. Yo, what's up, Wayne? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on? All right, man. So what's the game plan for this detail? This one's uh, interior shampoo only. So we're just shampooing the floors, wipe down, vacuum, cup holders, door jams, air vents, all around, up, down, you know? All right. And uh, what's your process with your new employee? What are you having him do first? Well, he's over there extracting and shampooing. I showed him how to work everything 
this is our most requested um, uh, package is the interior shampoos so I want him to take his time back there learning how to extract figure out his techniques what works with him and uh, once he learns that I mean that's where we get booked most of the time everything else wipe down that's a breeze so he's back there uh, getting the feel for it right now and I'm uh, wiping down do you feel like it's clean enough get a towel wipe up whatever's left over and get moving on the next thing if you need to come back you could touch it up on your way out but get through the car as of right now but um finish what you're doing wipe it down and then get rocking on the inside in this part yes sir what's up everybody i'm gonna be hosting a raffle and this raffle's only five dollars so I, I know you got five dollars venmo cash app zell and send me your number also when you win and what this raffle is going to consist of is four products from the store Check us out, we got all PNS products right here. And even on this side, we got Gion products over here. So I want you guys to pick four products. We're gonna get a vote on that one. So drop your comments down below what four products, and I'm gonna pick four and put that in with the raffle. Also, I'm gonna be doing a ride along. And that ride along is $200 credit, man. That's what I charge people to come ride along with me. You can see how I market, how I run the business, how I clean, how I do my thing, man. So. $5. Next thing is a $50 gift card for an in-store purchase. PNS, Gion. We got ceramic coatings over there. We got some polishing pads. Got some towels. We got a little bit of everything in here, man. And we get more and more each and every day. And also check us out at 3306 Orange Grove Avenue, North Highlands, California. This raffle is going to be going on to the 10th of this month. And also it's gonna end 3 p.m. or well, actually Instagram. Make sure you join the Instagram live and we're gonna start at 3 p.m. And uh, make sure when you send over the cash app for $5 that you send me your number, you contact me through Instagram, Facebook, however you can get in contact with me. And also make sure you're on there watching so you know when you win. And that's pretty much it, you guys. I appreciate all the love and support and this is my way of showing you guys. I appreciate you guys. Y'all stay tuned for the winners, let's go. Hey Wayne, so I hear you. Giving him some knowledge. Yes, sir. On the extracting game. Right, right. Can you tell me what you told him? I was just letting them know that in the beginning when you first start, you want to get every little thing and you're, you spend way more time than you need to on a certain spot or area. And I told him, get it the best you can. When it dries up, you'll be able to see what you left. So get through the whole vehicle the best you can and then double back, look over it, whatever you miss, get it up with a towel. So just don't excessively spend so much time just, you know what I mean? When we all do it, you know, as detailers, especially when you detail. So that's a good thing I noticed about him. He wants to get it all. Then you'll get certain employees that come in. They don't want to get it all. They just want to move and just go. They're not very detailed. Got it, man. Is that one thing a lot of detailers waste time doing? Like trying to get it perfect when I'm instead get it good enough, move on, come back and fits anything that you see. Exactly, I mean, I'm guilty of it. That's why I'm talking about it. Mm. So that's something I noticed that I had a problem with. And once I started switching that up, it helped with my time a little bit better. I, I mean, I'm still slow, but you know, I picked it up a little bit more. <laughs> hey, wait, so you said this is one of your most popular packages. Why is that? Because that's what I promote the most. That's um, what I show. On the Facebook ads or on just Instagram, in general? Facebook ads, every, every aspect, that's what I'm posting more of, Ooh. is interior shampoos. So that's what people, that's what people want. If I showed more of ceramic coatings and polishes, I would get that more. You know, some of the guys out there, I see that they don't even promote um, shampoos because they don't want to do them. They don't want to get dirty. Mm. So that's what they get all the time. This is what I enjoy doing. I can do all the other stuff. They still do come in. But this is what I show more of. Got it. So you're mainly focusing on one package to be your new bread and butter. You know what? I have all of them listed. They can see everything. But that's just what I show more of. Got it. That, that is my bread and butter. That's where I make most of my money. So pricing on this package, right. because you're getting so much demand, do you lower it? Do you hire it? Do you keep it the same? Or depends on the vehicle? Um, it depends on the vehicle. And during these times, um, I'm considering raising my prices again, Rez. Like maybe 15 to $25 more for the in and out Because these times is getting hard. They're trying to raise these gas prices $10. It's crazy, huh? They're raising the price on everything. Minimum wage is going to go up. Right. So that you know what that means? That 
yeah. gonna have, the packages are gonna have to go up. How much and, is this package right now? This one is three fifty, I believe. Three fifty? Yeah, three fifty for this. And you, you think you're raising it or keeping it safe? Um, not not specifically for the shampoos. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna start with my basic in and out. Got it. To be uh, cause they're one fifty. It's gonna go one sixty five. You know, then the SUV is gonna go up fifteen more, and I'm gonna gradually just increase it a little bit, just to make up for that gas. You know. Hey, and talking about the gas. Right. We're over here in Elk Grove. Right. It's a mission, man. What was it, like 30 minutes or 30 so? minutes, yeah. That's a $25 travel fee. Oh, oh so, so you also include a travel fee. Exactly. I, I have to uh, let them know. Like, anything past 10 miles, we charge a 25. And if it's farther, it's 50 miles, and we charge an extra there and back. That's an extra 100. Mm. You know what I mean? So we charge everything accordingly now. In your opinion, is, is that a deal breaker for some customers? Yeah, there's been a couple of them. You know there's always a couple of them. And they're like, what? I travel and they really lose their, their, their mind as if like, no. And I'll be like, oh, we do have a shop option. You can bring it yourself. Oh, really? Oh, uh, no. Like, I'm like, whoa, you give them options. They want the uh, travel. You know, they want us to come to them, but then they don't want to travel to us. So it's just like, all right, have a good day. It feels good to be in a position, Rez, to be able to let stuff go and not worry about it. You know what I mean? I remember when I first started, I was just like trying to take, no, you don't, no, okay, okay, it's okay. I'll, I'll wave the 20, and I was like taking losses. So, not anymore. Not anymore. Wayne? Not anymore. We, we ain't playing that. Hey, <laughs> what, do you, what advice do you have for new detailers who are facing that? They want to upcharge a travel fee, a this and that fee, but the customers don't, they have a problem with it. You know what? It's, it's a lot harder when you're first starting because you're trying to get established. So I, I would say in the beginning, you know, you got you to suck it up and build them relationships and, and take them hits, hits to the chin in the beginning because you got to establish yourself. They're like, who are you? You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people don't have that foundation to where they could be like, I got 215 five-star ratings. Um, I didn't done over thousands of cars. I, you know, I got clients. They don't have, it's not like that. A lot of people are, they got bills to pay and stuff. They ain't got room to, to wiggle like that. So just, just take it to the chin and you know, stay prayed up and, and, and believe and have faith. You and know? get those Google reviews? Come on, oh, you gotta get that foundation with them reviews. It's game changing, Rez, for real. Is. Hey Wayne, so summer's pretty much here. What's up? How you feeling about this weather, man? The hotness. You know what? It's another day, man. Yeah. It's going on two years. But I, hey, let, let, I'm lying, man. Every time it hits and you feel it just as the first time, I'm, let me stop lying. <laughs> oh, it's rough, man. Hey, it's rough. it get rough out here, man. And this really tests people. And every year it tests me every time. I, I be rethinking like, bro, is this what I want to do? Woo! But I get through it, you guys. I get through it. Hey, Wayne, so this is your first time letting a first day employee do extraction. Have you noticed that it's better to just throw them into the wolves or train them a little bit, baby steps? You know what, detailing is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Like, you got a drill brush, you got chemicals, you got an extractor. Hey, spray this, drill this, extract this. Show them, let them go. I mean, the only thing that uh, messes that up with training is when you're pressed for time. So since this car wasn't bad at all, it's just like, okay, this is a perfect time to just allow him to do this because this is our most requested job. I need him to know how to extract properly and uh, to know what he's doing. So throw him out there. Because if you hovering over somebody through the whole time, you're never going to get done with the detail because you're steady focusing on him all day. It's going to take an extra hour. So he's doing his thing. It's coming out nice. Have you figured out how long it takes to train an employee to determine if they're gonna, if they got it or don't got it? Honestly, after like the first couple cars. Yeah. After like two or three cars, if they don't got it, you got a problem mm -hmm. because it's simple. And um, the thing I'm noticing is coordination. Um, some guys are very awkward at everything they do and it's not like, they just don't look right doing it. And I'm just, bro, you gotta grab it firm. Grab it. It looks like it's controlling them when they're extracting or when they're drilling. The drill is all like this. They brushing like this. 
Like, it's just like, whoa, like, they don't got it. And if they don't got it, they don't got it. <laughs> they may not get it, Rez. But one thing I'm realizing is when you run into these guys, they can still work. The only thing is you can't send them out by themselves. You have to pair them up with somebody that's gonna clean up after them. So I keep them rolling. They help with the bulk of the detail, the big stuff, and you just double back over them and, and clean up after them is what I'm realizing. So I keep them rocking and rolling. So you really gotta figure out what type of employee you have yeah. and how to work with that employee. Exactly. Instead of trying to force them to be something they're not. They're not or they're not gonna be, sadly. Uh, so, like for example, no, we're not gonna mention no names. Right. But a certain employee, you mm. want them to be a leader, right? A manager, right? They're not built like that, though. They're not built like that, and I can't shape them and mold them. Cause one day it's going great, and then the next day you just see and you're just like, ah, it's gone. So maybe, maybe one day years down the line they may they may evolve. Hopefully, so they'll stick around and, and, until I see that change. Then I'll put them in position as soon as they grow. So I, I'm hopeful. <laughs> and then I also have tools like this mm -hmm. that you can get in here and go like that. Grab a towel, wipe it down and get it the best you can. Okay. And there's some other advice I want to give you with extracting. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do you go multiple ways still? Yes. So sometimes you got to get a little weird and start doing some stuff like this. Because each different way you go, you'll pick up stuff that way couldn't have got it. So keep that in mind. Hey, Wayne, so what you doing right now, man? He's not answering. Um, I wanted to ask him if he wanted to le add uh, leather conditioning and the uh, plastic um, conditioning. So there's upsell skills right there. Upsell, yeah. So for this one, for how big it is, it'll be an extra 50 for us to, you know, put that UV protection, that sun block, prevent your leather from cracking. You know, you ever seen that leather that look like it's, <sighs> well, that leather be, bro, look like it got cancer. Yeah, like yeah. it'd be cracking, it's dry, and at that point it's of no return. Mm. So we got to make sure you condition your leather, for sure. I for sure wasn't doing it when I had my vehicles. Gotcha, gotcha. Hey, so we're pretty much done with the detail. Yeah. How, how he do on his first detail, his first car? He got it. He got the extraction. He hasn't did any wiping down, so the extraction is good. Um, you know, this wasn't that bad. Most of the new guys come in, we're on a detail for four to five hours with a disaster. So they get the ultimate test. This one right here, we working them in slowly, but he got it. He got I mean, it. I feel comfortable letting him do it. So I, I feel like he's gonna do great. And you know, you, you notice that right away. Yeah. He got a good spirit. He's listening, he's applying it. And you know, you'll be able to pick, it, pick that up with some guys, especially detailers coming in. You know, they already got their way of doing it. And then you could tell when you tell them something that a lot of them don't like that because they feel like they already know what to do. But you need to know my way of doing it now that you're working with me. So sometimes it, there's a conflict with that. Hey, so have you noticed, are you looking, so are you looking for people with very little experience, no experience, or some experience in detailing before you hire them? You know what? Both of these ideas collide. I, I would like a detailer to come in, somebody that already knows what they're doing. Of course. Hey, grab the extraction and go. But with an open mind. Right, with an direction. open mind, of course, yeah. Got it. But it doesn't normally work like that. They come and then they go. You know, I had a couple of detailers come and work with me. Um, they gained confidence and was like, I could do this. And then they just go. Hey, have you <laughs> ever had any of your employees take a client? Not that I know of. <laughs> Not that I know of, man. As you get out there, you got to remember some of these vehicles. They maneuver certain ways that you could easily miss. And I learned this from trial and error when I got done with a job and I'm feeling great. Car is looking beautiful. The customer walks up, boom, flips the whole seat up. Dirtiness all below. So, you know, wiggle stuff around, figure it out how they move. Every car is different. I'm still learning because there's so many different brands and cars out there, you know. So, you know, sometimes some people are looking at you like, shouldn't you know that? Like, no, this is a new car, like. <laughs> so what should someone do? Ask the customer, Google it, or just try to figure it out? First thing you just said is, uh, I'm actually taking my own advice as you asked me that. Because I'll get out there and just try to figure it out myself. Come to find out, I didn't figure it out. I'll find out when they get out there. So, hey, um, could you show me how all your seats flip up? This looks like 
He's moved, can you show me? So just simply ask the customer, really. Hey, Wayne, has the customer hit you back up about the upsell? He the did. Seats? He said he's gonna pass on it. Oh, okay. He said not, not this time, maybe next time. Hey, is this a first time client? Yes, sir. How he find you? Uh, he said I was posted on a, like a community. Like, you know how the communi mm -hmm. community communicates? He's like, somebody posted you on there and suggested you. And I'm like, man, I'm popping up everywhere, spots I don't even know. So, hey, the more we detail, the more the name gets out there year after year. So, we are building something big. All right, so the customer decided to go ahead and add the wash. That's gonna be an extra 100 for the exterior wash. And we're gonna apply a spray wax with that. And I just want to say, shout out to Zippity, you guys. If you guys haven't tapped into Zippity, it's in the description down below. It's a platform for all detailers. Um, everything detailing from all the specs you need to get from the clients to the address to um, what detail they want to what package like every little thing you could think of and this right here is gonna be the upsell right here so you did try to upsell him earlier right with the seats he said no he did say no but then he came back and what was the conversation like he said I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get that wash my wife said to go ahead you know the wife is boss man she said go ahead and throw that wash in there yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update my app with the pricing and I'm gonna add that wash in there this is so that I stay um, how do I put it I stay organized you know what I mean because I could be out here and he could pay me and later on in the day, I'm just gonna forget like, dang, how much did I make from that detail? So this app is gonna keep track of everything. Exactly what I did from shampoo, from the travel fee to the exterior wash. So Supreme Wash, which is right here. Bam, so the total is 325. And then that's gonna bring our total to 425 now. Ooh. So there we go. So let's get this wash knocked out. If you guys are interested in tapping in with Zippity in the description down below, shout out to Zippity. Hey, how much does it cost? A month? Yeah. Um, it's all depending on the package you get. So it could be 80. Um, if you use my discount, make sure you guys say, hey, Hunter sent me. We need that half off. You know, get your discount, man. So it's depending on what the charge. I don't know what they're charging right now. So yeah. you guys let me know. But it's definitely, it's you around, need it. It's, yeah, you definitely need it. If you don't have this as a detailer, you're slacking. And a lot of details that I know that don't have any platform to keep organized, they're not organized. They're like, dang, I overbooked. Dang, who did I have today? They just, you know, tap in. Hey, Wayne. So since you haven't trained this guy mm -hmm. on that stereo, that wasn't the plan. What's the game plan you're training him right now? I just teach him as I go. I don't have any like specific method. If I see something I can show him, I say, hey, take it. You see me do it, now you do it. Simple as that. Hey, Wayne, I have a question for you. What's up? It's getting pretty hot. I see you foam the car up like two or three times. Right. Why? Why? Just to keep it uh, lubricated. Because uh, we kind of go over each other's work. And you can't go over a car while it's dry. So I try to make sure I keep it lubricated. Because that's going to cause scratches if not. Got it. So, Do you think he's drying up pretty quickly right now? Uh, or not? It's doing pretty good. I think we're right at that mark where I'm about to start rinsing right now. So we're good, man. And plus, I got spot free water, right? Got it, got it. Hey, Wayne, what's the update on the detail? Update on the detail is we're doing the final touches. Uh, we got rims. We're gonna uh, spray some uh, some shine, some show shine on the rims, or paint gloss by PNS, which you could pick up at my shop. Ha! <laughs> um, we're gonna hit the tire shine, and we're gonna touch up the windows, and notify the customer. That's a wrap. That's a wrap, my peoples. It's heat, it's beating on us, but uh, we knocked it out. We got it done. Me and my man Marquise. Uh, they got the Supreme Wash and Interior Shampoo. They only wanted the shampoo, but then they see how amazing job we did. They say, hey, go ahead and get the outside done too. So we topped out at 425 for the detail. And uh, that's a wrap, you guys. If there's anything that you guys see that we could have done better, any advice, hey, drop it down below. Like, share, subscribe. You guys know what to do with it. We on our way to the next detail. So uh, catch you on the next video.